Hey guys, I'm uh, really excited about a gun purchase that I just made. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I just had some fireworks and some beef jerky, so we're moving all that. Get this out of the way before anybody sees it. Starts a lot of political shit in the comments. Um, as you remember, I had the Taurus 454 Raging Bull, and uh, I even just made a video about how I think Taurus is all right. Uh, I just traded that gun. <laughs> Not for any real reason. There wasn't anything wrong with that gun, and I still have my uh, Taurus Model 66, which is a really good gun. I just have had the bug to get something new for a long time now, and if it wasn't a motorcycle or a pickup truck or a something or other. I just wanted something new, needed a, a change. And uh, when I realized that I could get this rifle uh, by trading in that 454 and actually get money back, uh, I, I jumped on this actually. So I don't feel like I, 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 I was able to get something new and uh, get some, some cool new uh, stuff and didn't have to spend any money to do it, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I kind of hate it when people try to justify purchases when really, at the end of the day, they just wanted something new. I'll be real honest, I just wanted something new. There was really no reason for me to get this other than I just wanted something new. And I uh, didn't have to pay any money for it, so that's even better. So let's open this up and see what we got. Savage always has these weird boxes where you gotta peel the corners back. Oh man. Let's see if I can get this too. There we go. Fold back. It reminds me of um, a Christmas story. You remember that movie where the little boy pulls out his Red Rider BB gun? And he's so excited, and it's Christmas morning, you know? And he pulls the wrappers off, and he's like, wow. That's how this is. All right, this is a Savage Model 10 SBA. And honestly, I don't know much about this gun. I know that I like Savage. I know that I like the Model 10s. I've never had one, but I've never heard bad things about them. <clears throat> and I know that it's a 6.5 Creedmoor, which I've also never messed with much, but I haven't heard any bad things about that either. So, let's see, where's the bolt? Here's the bolt. Nice, big, tactical looking bo uh, bolt here. Boom. Nice, uh, cool looking bolt. It's got a real big uh, handle down there. Just kind of looking at this, it looks like just your basic push feed bolt. It's not like a Mauser action or anything or a controlled ground feed. It's just a regular old push feed, which that could be another video. I have no problem with push feed rifles. Uh, the Model 70 that I have is one of the push feed models and it's been a wonderful, great rifle. I have no problem with it. So, oh, there's instructions on here. I don't really know. It's just, I guess, just letting me know how to put it in, into the gun. We've got a uh, chamber indicator here, or whatever these little things are called. Chamber flag, maybe that's what it's called. What else is all in here? Here's all your paperwork uh, and other stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my receipt in there, which is a good practice. If you don't put your receipt in with your box of stuff when you get it, you really should. It, it can give you information that you might wanna know later, like how long have you had the gun, how much did you pay for it, or anything like that. So I'm just gonna, there's my receipts, I'm gonna put them in there. Looks like we got a trigger lock, that's basic stuff. Uh, some earplugs are in there, which I normally don't find, but that's actually an excellent idea. I wish I had shot using earplugs 
uh, a lot sooner than I did because my hearing is awful and I'm 35. Uh, I should have been wearing earplugs a, a lot sooner, but I didn't. So, yeah, manual, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna put that, I don't think of anything else in here. We're gonna put that back in there. You don't care to see it, and I don't really either. So there we go. It seems like no one can ever figure out how to put these boxes back together too, by the way. I bought these, I bought a couple of Axis, Savage Axis rifles before. And when I buy them at the store, uh, they always bring me this box out and these corners were all just completely screwed up because nobody knows how to put them back together. But I do. I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, okay. So here we go. I'm really excited to have this. This is a really neat little rifle. There's a few things I like about it. Number one, it's a Savage. I, I really like Savage. Uh, I've never had a Model 10, but like I said, my dad has an Axis in 22-250. My wife has an Axis in uh, 243, and I bought my, which I bought that 243 for her, and I bought my nephew a Axis in 7mm 08, which is also a really cool gun. And I'm really excited that he has that and that I was able to get it for him. But this one is not an Axis. This is a 10. It is a Model 10 SBA from what I understand. Uh, Savage is a little weird in that they have all kinds of different little letters and designations and they all mean something different. And I'm not exactly sure what the 10 SBA is, but I know that there's a 10 BA or something like that which is considered to be one of their more long range rifles but I have a feeling that this one is too for a couple of reasons. Number one, this gun if you can see right here comes with a 20 MOA uh, scope mount. Uh, I, I'm really not into like long range shooting as a hobby. I've shot long range a lot before but I've never gotten into you know the different scope mounts and bases and all these things that can compensate and do all this wild shit way out there. I don't sit here and uh, work formulas to figure out exactly where to set the scope before I even shoot. I don't do anything. I've, I mean, I've shot six, seven hundred yards before with my old AR-15 and used to pop beer bottles with that. Uh, but that was just, just me out shooting. This has got all kinds of little things on it. Um, the stock up here, for one thing, has got two um, swivel studs. One would be for a bipod and the other is for a scope, or a scope, a sling. And also the stock right here is kind of flat. That is so it can rest very stable on a set of sandbags or something like that. So it's set up for a bipod or sandbags. It's got the scope mount here to you know, compensate for some extra elevation, give you a little more room to play with a scope. It's a little bit of a heavy barrel, but it's not like a stupid heavy barrel. I've seen barrels before on like 17 HMRs that are just so big and stupid looking and I have no idea why anybody would want one that's just that heavy. This is also set up for a suppressor. Wow, that's really tight. There it goes. Um, I don't know if I'll put a suppressor on it. I'm not really into I'm not really into just super tactical shit anyway. So I don't know that I'll put a suppressor on it, but I might and it's nice that this has the option for it. Uh, but other than that, what I like about it uh, outside of the stuff of you know, it just just general rifle stuff. I like that this is just a normal looking buttstock. I don't like the fully adjustable, like raised raised cheek well, adjustable length of pull. I, I don't really need all that. Normally, when someone hands me a gun with all those adjustments, I never touch them. I just shoot the gun. Uh, very rarely will I pick up a gun and think, "Wow, that feels really awkward," and wish that I had some adjustments. It, it rarely ever happens. This feels fine. My length of pull is probably pretty long since I'm 6'2", and I've kind of got longer uh, arms. So my length of pull is normally, I mean, this is fine. I don't need adjustments on that. And as far as the cheek weld and all that, I've never had a problem with that either. But uh, it's got a three position safety. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it's probably just like my Model 70, which is all the way back, probably, I'm going to guess, locks the bolt. Yep. 
and the trigger, yep. If you move it to the middle, there's a little middle notch. I'll bet the bolt opens, which it does, but I bet the trigger is still locked. Yes, it is. So that's the one in the middle. If you push it all the way forward, you're probably good to go. And let's check the trigger on it. Dude, the trigger is nice on this thing. My friend's got a Bergara, 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 uh, Bergara. What was the name of the dude in the Jungle Book? What was that guy? The Panther. What was his name? I don't know. Something like Bergara. He's got a Bergara. The trigger on it is amazing. Uh, another friend of mine has a Ruger RPR, which is uh, the trigger on it is also amazing. I don't know that this is quite to that, but I'll bet it could be if I adjust this trigger. Honestly, I, it might be as good as those. I don't know. It's a really nice trigger. It was pretty much the selling point for me on buying this. This is the uh, Aki trigger, so it is actually user adjustable, so you could loosen it or tighten it if you wanted to. But that's all basic uh, Savage stuff. It feels like it cocks on open. I think it's the axis that's backwards. It's like cock on close, where it's it just pops open, but then when you close it, you have to. This is the this is more of a traditional where it cocks on open, meaning it's harder to pull it up than it is push down. I think the axis is backwards. For that. Um, this has a blind box magazine right here. There's no plate to open up to dump your ammo, so if I were to uh, load this up for hunting or something and say I don't see anything that day, if I were going to unload this, I'd have to sit here and just work the bolt until um, the gun is empty. That is typically a cheaper option. On, that's typically like an entry level thing on rifles to have a blind box magazine. I actually kind of like blind box magazine, just, I guess I'm just weird, I like cheaper stuff, but <laughs> uh, my Model 70, again, was a blind box magazine. I didn't have a problem with it, uh, and I would think it would even might help stiffen up the stock too, might help, uh, help accuracy. Uh, <clears throat> for all I know, maybe that's why they put that on here. But it seems like a really nice little rifle. I paid $4.29 for this, and uh, I think that's kind of a steal for a rifle this nice. And I've been uh, curious about the 6.5 Creedmoor. I think it needs some oil. The bolt's kind of squeaky. Uh, but I've been curious about the 6.5 Creedmoor for a while now, and it seems like a uh, I, I kind of have problems with uh, bolt cartridges that were designed for AR-15s. Just because to me, if you're going to design a bolt cartridge, or if, or if you're going to get a bolt cartridge, get a cartridge that was designed to be a bolt cartridge. The 65 Creedmoor was designed to be an AR cartridge, so there's bound to be some compromises between the two. but. 6.5 Creedmoor is just flying off the shelves on, on bolt actions and I mean from everything I see uh, for good reason it's a small little efficient bullet that's just carrying all kinds of energy down range with its speed and its ballistic coefficient so I'm really excited about this this has just been a little unboxing video of it uh, for a scope right now my pick would be a Leupold uh, 4 to 12 by 40 just because I just love that scope just in general. I put that scope on uh, anything. I've got a Leupold 4 to 12 by 40 on a 4570. I've got a Redfield which is a Leupold 4 to 12 by 40 on uh, my 450 Marlin. And the reason is because it's got huge eye relief. Like the scope could be out here and I'd probably still be able to shoot you know, the gun and, and use the scope. But it's got a huge eye relief. It's got a big nice eye box so it doesn't matter if you're off a little bit, you can still see good and clear through it. And it's just as soon as you pull it up, bam, it's ready to go, which is great for hunting because if the deer's walking out, 
you know, maybe you're hunting a road, which with a gun like this, this would be perfect for hunting on the road, but deer might be coming across, you don't have much time. You really need a scope that pulls up and is quick to uh, just be there so that you can shoot through it. And a little pole 4 to 12 by 40 works perfect for that because of just what I said, the eye relief and the eye box are huge. You've got a ton of room to uh, just do whatever you got to do. If you pull up the gun in a funny way or it gets caught on your jacket, you're probably still going to be able to see through the scope and be able to take the animal. But I mainly got this just for uh, long range shooting with my buddies because like I said, uh, Tony's got a Pergara, Drew's got an RPR, and so uh, I'm going to take this out there and uh, show them how it's done with this Savage 10 SBA and 6.5 Creedmoor. Y'all have a good one. Bye.